Okay. Hey, British Fury, are you ready for that snake bite? What the fuck? What is... Wh why is there snakes all over my room? Ah, I don't know, old chap. Maybe they come from their mother? <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> the one time I didn't have my gun loaded. British Fury, did you bring these snakes into my house? On the contrary, my dear boy, I didn't bring them in my house. That would be my cousin from Australia. He kind of brought them in for me for the review that we were doing. Well, for the review. I want to say this professionally calm as possible. When I say we're reviewing a snake bite with you doing it, I didn't mean you to bring in fucking live snakes in my house that bite me! Well, sorry for me for being a professional British YouTuber. I was just showing the audience here how annoying these snake bites could be by actually feeling the gap of having snakes in the house. Sorry for me for being a professional YouTuber here. Can we just do the review? God. Fine, 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 old chap. Let's get started with the snake bite. Greetings, chaps, from the Queens of England to the gentlemen of England. How are you doing today? You do realize, British Fury, that there's more than just English watching this. Dab, 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 dab. You shut up there, Yankee Doodle. I'm talking to my lovely audience here. Whatever. Anyway, today we are going to review the Cromwell Snake Bite. Yes, this lovely tank right here. For those who don't know much about the Cromwells, I'll explain really quick. During pretty much World War II, the British were getting our ass whooped pretty badly. We had to use American tanks to pretty much propel most of the fighting, including the African Corps, until we invented the Cromwell. The Cromwell was our game changer and actually turned the tide for us pretty well in the African Corps. It was a very, very beautiful tank. However, this specific tank here, my gentlemen and ladies, this tank is not the same as a Cromwell. Not even far from it. This has been a nerf down version of the Cromwell. Now, usually we'll do like the American does. We're just going to go right to the armaments review first. And as you can already tell, the armaments are not good. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about here, chaps. Armaments that is really, really, really weak. We're talking about, like, literally the highest millimeters of armor we're talking about here, chaps, is 76 millimeters, and that is just the commander's hatch ring. That's the only strongest part on this tank. The rest is all completely bad. We're talking 50 millimeters. We're talking about 63 millimeters. We're talking about 44 millimeters. Then we're talking about 42 millimeters all around this side. Pretty much 39.7 millimeters. That's always weird to me to see that in Wargaming. And then we got 39.3 millimeters for the top part. 38 millimeters, which would be the bottom half. 31 millimeters for pretty much the back end of the rear end and some parts in the front. Then you have 25 millimeters for the mace chastity angle armor. Then you got the gun, the top part of the tank, and the tracks being 20 millimeters. Although the gun, let's say, it's it all chaps, you cannot, you can pen the gun, but it's not going to do anything else to it. Then you got 19 millimeters for the inside turret ring, and then basically 17 millimeters for the underbelly, 14.4 millimeters for the main bottom part. 14.0, I don't know why they put the O there, but whatever, for these little parts in the back. 8 millimeters, where is the 8 millimeters? Oh, it's the upper part of the tank's little side skirts. And 6 millimeters. Now you're probably wondering, since most British people are going to be scratching their heads wondering, British Fury, Cromwells have more armor than this. Why is this weaker? Well, that's because of the speed of the tank. Okay, I gotta hold up there for a second there, British Fury. 
I gotta ask. Go ahead, the mannequin swine. So this is reduced armor than the actual Cromwell. The tank that you say that literally is the thing that turned the tide in the African Corps, correct? Yes, that is correct, you old Yankee Doodle. Then why would you fuck something that works? Well, I don't know, old chap. It's like tea, for example. Sometimes it could be perfect just right, but sometimes we want to add a little bit more in the tea to make it a little bit better, and you never know. That's like taking a Sherman of ours and weakening it so much, but to increase that speed to literally up to 70, but the Sherman's like has only 10 millimeters of armor. Do you know how many Americans would not want to drive that fucking thing, especially during World War II time? <clears throat> Fury, you're underestimating wargaming. Don't give them any ideas. Because Americans will probably eat that shit up in the marketing. So, just pretend we don't say anything about that ever again about a Sherman going really fast with only 10 millimeters of armor. Just, just don't. I'm just saying. Indeed you say there, American Fury. Yes, this is a reduced armor, and it goes up to nearly 80 if you actually have the right perk systems, and you can make it go faster with some equipments, which I would not recommend since this tank needs a lot of other problems. Now, before you say why, old chap, Let's see. Let's show you its gun and explain why I have a problem with it. The gun itself has a very, very good firing rate. However, though, accuracy and aim time is not good. I mean, we're talking about an aim time that's okay. Sitting still shooting it is not bad however if you fire this on the move you might as well be firing a civil war musket at people making it really really hard to shoot on the move especially at far away distance so let me get this straight oh fuck the yankee doodle has something to say again you're cromwell here this tank is the same accuracy on the move as a freaking musket Oh, by Jerry's beard, I need a tea because he's just going to rant about this one. But yes, because apparently that's how Wargaming put it in this game. What were you thinking, Britain? Six and a half hours later. The light tanks are meant to shoot on the move, not sit there and go like, I'm just going to sit here and aim and then get obliterated by something bigger than this fucking gun. One eternity later. Seriously. Ugh. Ugh. Well, before I lose any more brain cells from the American field right here, yes, that is correct. Most light tanks are designed to shoot on the move because of those tanks. I'm not saying it doesn't, but try shooting like many miles away on the move trying to shoot a target and it's the reticle is out of control. Even in close range, you're going to have a hard time aiming this on the move. This thing has to be right in your face kind of shooting play style. However... Unlike the American Fury that disagrees that most light tanks go up brawl, there are light tanks that snipe. Did you forget, American, that you can have the T-92 as a sniper? Oh yeah, I forgot about that tank. Of course you did. <laughs> I mean, it's the one tank you don't, nobody really notice unless somebody was determined to play it. But there are light tanks that snipe, and this is one of them. Its play style is more like a sniper. Now, however... Let's talk about fixing it, because yes, we have the hit points up there, 750. We have viewing range. I increased that more, and you'll see why. I've used the perk system to make that a little bit better. And, um, because if without it, it would be the same as your spotting range. I mean, your skill concealment. It's like the, the par with that. So if something outspotted you, you can't, like, see it. So that's, that's a problem when you're a light tank player. However... We got to talk about the equipment and stuff to fix it. Now, there is many ways, old chaps, to fix this. We're talking about, like, if you could, you could put ventilations for 10 plus crew performance and reloading to make a ridiculous loading. I disagree. The gun reloading is not bad on this. I, I would just say there, Governor, it's usually not bad at all. But, however, it's going to need aim speed time. Definitely a must for this tank. You're going to need to aim in fast, especially if you're going to turn this into a light tank 
kind of sniper, like I usually play it as. However, you don't have to have it. Now, shell accuracy, that's another one. Now, however, if you don't want it to be like that, you could put in armaments per, you could put like spell on a small liner. You can have things like that to protect you. You can even have more speed to get up close and personal with the light tank. There's more ways to fix the tank than you realize. You can either make it a super fast light tank that goes right up to their faces, right up to the Jerry's face. Or you can sit in the bushes like I do, snipe for a little bit, and try to pick them off from a distance since your firing on the mood is really retrocious in my opinion. So that's how you fix it with equipment. Let's talk about the commander real quick. Now the commander is one of, I know you did, this is not the commander that you put into the tank right here, but he was only my nine per crew. I would actually gladly show you right now what the commander is. There he is audience. It's in another tank right now, but as you can see, he only had two perks and I did not want to reassign him to another tank, but this would be the commander you would get if you bought the tank. It literally was a broken crew, but I would say that at the end how this is because it's really a shame what happened to the snake bite in my opinion when I save it at the end. But all right now chap, let's talk about how to fix the tank first. All right, so how I fix it, these are the perks I picked for the snake bite. I put in born leader, rapid reloading, six cents, run and gun, because sometimes this is a light tank and it's nice to have some more accuracy on the move because trust me, you're gonna need it, especially how bad the gun dispersion is on this tank. Um, iron mace, that's usually me sniping from long distance to keep the penetration from a good long distance. Um, this is the binoculars I talked about, increase the maximum viewing range. I needed that because, again, your detectability range is worse than your spotting range for some reason. So I just put that on there to get it a little bit more better to see the targets before they see me, even though you're going to be spotted because you're a big light tank. But still, it's nice to see the enemy as well. Uh, 10 plus to accuracy, definitely a must for these tanks. Definitely. Um, turret rotation speed of uh, accuracy, definitely a must. Especially if you're going to go playing light tanks. And the last perk is random, but I put this on here to get more assisted damage. Three seconds to increase your drainage of targeting enemies from over time. So in other words, if I spot an enemy, it gives me more time to see it. So that way I have more assisted damage. So I put that on there as well. However, there are many ways, dear chaps, to fix this tank. You have... Pretty much, you can put Deadeye in here to increase the damage module. You can have Clutch Breaking to turn even faster. I mean, there is so many ways, comrades, to basically, you know, switch this out there, chaps. And it's not a bad thing. It really isn't. It's just, you may need other things. Now, if you're brawling, then maybe track repairs if you got lucky to not get damage. Maybe, like, consumable technician to... Give your allies what you see, which is beneficiary for this tank as well if you want to. I just sacrifice it for the eye thing. It's really up to you for that one. But just, it's really, you have to play it first before you upgrade them. And usually you don't want to waste all nine perks like I did. But I don't waste them. I had the snake bite for a long time, dear chaps. So I this is how I usually play it. But there's many ways you could. I would just recommend you just play the tank. See its reticle, see its problems, and see if you're going to get this tank. But you're here to meet for a review in it. And it has some problems. It has a lot of problems. So, okay, chaps. Now that we've been doing all that, let us get in the battle. Sorry, old chaps. I forgot to mention one thing. The ammunition and its cost. I forgot all about that, dear chaps. All right. But for the first one, armor piercing. This is the normal standard round. It's only 56, you know, credits, which is very cheap for a light tank. I keep 34 of them, but the penetration is 100 meters at 91, and 500 meters is 79. Now, granted, yes, some people are going to say this is not exactly a sniper tank with that type of rounds. That is correct. However, because of how big this tank is, it's usually need to be sniping. Granted, yes, you're fast. You're very agile. You can turn on a good dime. Yes. However, because of how big and width this tank is, it's still going to get you killed. Especially if tanks know how to clutch break and turn against you. 
So it's best to usually snipe with this sometimes. Don't get me wrong, the brawling could be one, but just you got to be careful knowing not to face so many tanks like a Vanguard can, can just go in and take on everything. Zuck les bleu, oui! French uh, Napoleon. So the next round you get is APCR. Now this is the round I snipe with. And yes, even though it's 2,800 credits, which is mostly sometimes cheap for some light tanks, but granted how much damage you do, it's not enough to consider the fact of how much you have to shoot. Remember, you're only doing like 88 to 100 damage a shot, so... But the 100 meters, you get 144 pen. And then you for 500 meters, 119 millimeters of pen. So, why way more better odds to snipe with these rounds than you do with the AP rounds. Granted, if you're going to snipe, for anyone who wants to try this out, and anyone who has it, or if you're curious, when you're near the far away distance, aim load these rounds when you face your own tier, and when you face like very very light armor vehicles at long range however if you're dealing with eights and heavily tank armor sometimes this is probably your best chance to pen them more than any other tank so keep that in mind so and then the last one i do not pack comrades is literally he which is <laughs> i dare say governor it's Useless. Indeed, British Fury. <laughs> These things are a joke. Because 100 millimeters away is only 38. And 500 meters is only 38. So, <laughs> unless you're hunting arties with these shells and landing shots on their strong point, there's really not many tanks that are that incredible weak. Maybe like the Scorpion G if you hit him on the head turret. I don't know, but I, I wouldn't dare test it. So I pack none. So there you go. So now let's actually go to the battlefield to tell you. Alright chaps, here's a replay of the battle with the snake bite. Now unfortunately though, it won't show off a good performance. Why is that British Fury? Is it because like you sucked in the tank? No Yankee Doodle, if you can see on the back button, we are in a tier 8 game. So, how do I usually play the snake bite? The snake bite is an odd specimen to say the least. For those who play Cromwells, must understand one important element. They're not designed to be frontline pushing around people right off the bat. I mean, of course, you can always spot them out since this is a snake bite. And almost got me killed there for just trying to spot some people. But really, how to play the snake bite is just play it as a sniper light tank. That's basically it. You sure about that, British Fury? Because this is a light tank. Yes, Yankee Doodle. This tank is designed to be a sniper only, my dear old chap. And I just jumped right in front of the German Fury. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's pretty funny, right? I heard that in that room. Still, anyway, back to being all serious. The Snake Bite is a very beautiful tank. It's really fun. However, driving it on the move is not very good, though, chaps, because that gun accuracy will make you have to sit there like that, except for I couldn't fire because there was nothing to shoot at. You basically had to sit there and shoot. Now, what I'm trying to do right now is trying to stay behind cover, but see that IS out there? Eventually, I start shooting that, but I'm trying to, f you know, pick my target, since as you can look on the mini-map on the right, on the left-hand side, comrades, it's literally... It's very hard to predict where the shots would go, and here I am pissing off the good old Soviet tank. Hey, Russia doesn't take that very lightly. Oh, calm down, Brit. I mean, Russian fury. Now, as you can see, we're losing the northern flank here, so I said, okay, time to split and get the hell out of here, because this is how it's going to lose heavily. So what I did is I tried to go into the city to try to support the other panzers, in the other side and suddenly i'm turning german you see this is what happens when i live with a bunch of germans british and soviets it's like good god <laughs> so as you can see i'm driving along driving along old chaps but it's just then i realize eh, 
Now that the northern is a little bit secured and this side is won, I figured, well, I'll stay in the city still, but just spot out people for the destroyers. So here I am driving out again, trying to get some shots in, and here's that IS-3 again, pissing off the Soviet Fury. Hey, Soviet Fury! Motherfucker, I'm going to shoot you with vodka, you asshole! <laughs> like, you see you try! Oh yeah? I'm gonna shoot you right now! Yeah, I can tell the vodka got to you. You hit the house, you dingleberries! Goddamn Soviets. Well, anyway, so I'm driving along, driving along, just basically keeping my distance. As you can see, firing on the move audience, too, as you can notice, me missing a lot. Not exactly a thing, but there's our first kill, the snake bite. Oh, well, not snake bite, Jesus. Scorpion G. And, um, <laughs> this is what I mean. This is the tank that you had to literally stay behind your team shooting. Now, granted, yes, it's got some speed. It's got some high modem speed. But the gun accuracy firing on the mood is so downgraded in F. Like, watch when I try to shoot this L thing. See, it just fires completely the wrong direction. And my, meanwhile, remember, I have the equipment pieces. I just took a hit there and lost crew because of that goddamn medium. You gotta remember, audience, this has the perks of smooth riding and stuff like that. It's supposed to help me with accuracy on the move and stuff like that. But unfortunately, though, it just doesn't work with the snake bite at all and it's just so stupid yes i know american fury that is true <laughs> now as you can see up ahead there's a the soviet defender and i decided to say you know what he's on low health maybe i can get around his side since i have enough health to take one hit so here i go but and i did not expect this so i'm driving along dry wrong i see him about to aim this way so i turn around immediately to go that way to try to get around him he shoots misses and then i try to shoot him again but i fell off the cliff did a barrel roll and basically boom dead <laughs> well that's one way to say the brits to the Jer i mean russians there that we are here to stay and we're going to do a barrel roll on your face <laughs> oh us good old british tactics british tactics you just barrel rolled and hurt your crew and gave him so much brain injuries yeah, but you know what? We did it with style. Too sure. <laughs> now, I try to load AP finally on the LTG, but it somehow ricocheted, and that was the end of the game. So there you have it, audience. That's usually how you play the snake bite. Not a good performance, obviously, but it shows the questioning of also how bad it is firing on the move. It's just the accuracy on the move is so badly... The, like, it fires anywhere, making it, it literally a sniper light tank. That's all this is. It's a sniper light tank. Not a brawler, unless you get really close to one, but anything else like that. All right, let's see the reward, chaps. <laughs> British Fury, you got shit reward. My tier 6 can make more money than that. That's because, you American swines, we literally had to spam premium at 8s to spend some of those 8s. Even the IS-7 I barely pen, unless I aim for underbelly, you Yankee Doodle. Literally, that's the only reason why I would have gone negative. Now, however, if you're in your own game and actually spend normal AP, or if you could pen some tanks with AP, like mediums and light tanks, you wouldn't have this much problems. But however, I only walked away with 5,000 gold, chaps. And did the best in the game for direct hits, which is oddly, like I could say, for some tanks. Hey, I tried to shoot you with the IS-7, you goddamn Brits. Yeah, but you drunken Russians hit the fucking broadside of a house. Literally. So, even though we did less damage, we only killed two tanks, did assistant of 1,173, which is a big plus. So, in the total, I did, like, pretty much, like, 1,800 and something. Pretty much not a bad trade-off. I mean, yeah, it didn't do basic damage, but most light tanks are like that, chaps. Sometimes you can't do a good game damaging people. Sometimes you can actually play around and get some spotted assists. That's the beauty of playing light tanks. So, final verdict, chaps. What do I rate this tank? And what do you think, American Fury? I think it's shit. Honestly, if you want my truth. The, this tank has so much problems. I mean, 
And the worst part about it is it has the accuracy of a musket on the move. So what's the point with this light tank? So I'm going to give it like a 1 out of 10. It's awful. Yankee Doodle, you got to give it some respect. It's still a fun tank. And you got to give it more respect than that. How do I give something with more respect if it can't really pen anything higher above its tier? Well, it can't be Jesus either. How do I rate it, dear comrades, for old British and Queen? Well, let's take a look at recap. Yes, this tank does not have prep matchmaking. It goes up two tiers higher, as what you expect. It's a fast-moving light tank. However, the gun needs premium to pen some heavy tanks. Though, due to the fact that also firing on the mood at long range is not exactly going to make an accurate shot half the time. So, forcibly, you have to snipe, making this into a light sniper tank. Gun's really good at fast reloading. It's decently okay, but it's not a great pending gun, as you can top on the screen of the pendings and all that, and how much damage you do. So, final verdict, I have to give this... Well, let's take a little bit of flash to the past, dear old chaps. Oh, God. Stop it, American Fury. We still have to do this. In the past, this tank was amazing. Pure, pure amazing. We're talking about a snake bite back then. That literally, chaps, you get a unique officer that apparently I told you I didn't have it signed to this tank, but I showed you its profile, had a unique perk called Snake Bike Perk, which increases British accuracy to pretty much more accuracy on the aim time. Oh yeah, I remember those days, British Fury. That was irritating. Every time I saw a British fucking Conqueror, they always had that commander, so they were able to snapshot anyone. Precisely, Yankee Doodle. They are usually were greatly heavily affected. Back then, this tank would have been a must own in your garage just for the commander itself. Back then, I would have had to give it a rating of a 9 out of 10. This tank had to have been in your garage if you weren't a light tank player or not. That commander was really useful and actually really beneficiary. However, old oh chaps, the times have changed. The perk systems are gone. The tank commander doesn't have unique perks no more, and it saddens my heart to know that this tank was a high marketing value for back then, is now an empty husk in my opinion for the British tank. How do I avert it today? Compared to back then being a 9 out of 10, it is a 7 out of 10. The tank is still beautifully fun. If you play it right as a sniper, and if you play it right as a pretty much an aggressor at the time is right up close and personal. Do not try to shoot on the move it far away. It's not going to easily hit the target like a teen, like the American's T-92. Yeah, that tank can hit on the move, British Fury. I know, Yankee Doodle. I'm just giving an example. But my point is, for anyone who wants to own any British tanks, this is a tank that's still pretty fun. However, it's kind of an empty husk now, knowing that it doesn't have one thing unique about it besides that. So, yeah, for Queen and Country, this is 7 out of 10. And I'm glad that your chaps sticked around with us. I'm glad you're here, American Fury. My pleasure, British Fury. But still, I still say it's trash. That's why we call you the special Americans, Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Hey, still, regardless if you like the tank or not, it's still a beautiful tank for any light tank players today, and especially if you want to design the snipe. I would recommend this tank if you're going to play as a sniper. Now, would I recommend it for every light tank player? No. This tank has some quirks to it. It's not a great tank. It's not accurate. However, it's got speed, agility, and sniping mechanic if you stay in the shadows. Pretty okay, in my opinion. It's an okay tank. So thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you lovely chaps for Queen and Country in the next video. Bye!